Electric cars are all the rage at the minute. Between government incentives, wanting to help the planet and all the rest, we're seeing more and more of those little green bits at the start of number plates. Whether you love, like or hate them, you can't deny that the advances in technology are absolutely fascinating. Whether the advances in infrastructure can keep up or not. A lot of us know though, and well car enthusiasts, that electric cars are nothing new by now though. Automakers have been trying to make electric cars work for donkey's years, with the technology never quite being there to keep up. Remember, electric cars date back as far as the 1800s. And to keep it relevant, of course, perhaps the most bizarre and rare mark to golf available is an electric one, the City Stromer. Revealed in 1984, it was fully electric. As part of 50 years of golf, let's find out more. Electric cars are a dream that people have wanted to make a reality for decades, centuries even. And Volkswagen, of course, are no exception. The Mark II wasn't the first city strummer, by the way, let's just get that out of there straight away. There was a Mark I version, but it was never actually put into production and it wasn't publicly available, so we ain't gonna talk too much about that one. Plus, I know more about Mark II golfs than I do Mark I golfs, because I know the square root of fuck all about Mark I golfs. But at least I admit it. But yes, it was available as a Mark II in extremely limited numbers, mind you, but it was available nonetheless. As you can imagine, just like every other car I've decided to cover in this 50 years of golf thing, it's becoming increasingly difficult to find info or evidence of anything to do with these cars online. But after digging through some European websites and some other things, I managed to find out some interesting facts. And I know that somebody out there in the comments is going to tell me that every single thing I have said is wrong, and that's fine. I'm okay with that. I'll, 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 I'll cry myself to sleep. Anyway, they were built in cooperation with a company called RWE, a company whose name we won't even fucking attempt to pronounce. Ah, fuck it, I'll give it a go. I've written it down here. Re Reinicht Westfalisches Electric Staatswerk Akt Aktionsgesellschaft. That's that's what you're getting, and you're gonna all slide me in the comments anyway. Who are a big energy supplier in Germany? With a mind-blowing 31 miles of range, now but can bear in mind it was 1984, even your toothbrush wasn't electric back then and Van Halen had only just released 1984, and a top speed of around 60 miles per hour, which, you know, is basically on fucking par with the diesels they were putting out anyway. It took a staggering 16 gel batteries, replacing the rear seats and filling the boot. And as you can imagine, they would have been bloody heavy. The City Stromer wound up weighing almost twice as much as a standard Mark II Golf at 1.5 tons. It's like an old school Clio V6 but with absolutely none of the performance gains. But you could plug it into your house and charge it. No word on how long that took online that I can find but uh, I expect it to be a long time anyway. I'm sure there's probably still some of them charging now from 1984. Also completely unique to these City Stromers and from what I can see not all of them have it for some crazy reason, but the grill at the front, rather than having slats going across, it's smoothed off. Much like modern electric cars, they did away with the grill because, you know, it didn't really need one. But unlike any Mark II Golf we've ever seen in any shape or form, the centre section of the grill opens up to reveal a cubby hole with a plug for charging. That's fucking cool. The motor is mounted transversely in the front, just like a normal Golf. Although interestingly, from what I can see in one of the pictures here, there's a standard battery there too. Now what that's for, I have no idea. The gauge cluster is especially interesting, well, to me anyway, because it was specific to the City Stromer. Following the same look as the standard GTI set of clocks, the rev counter was mostly empty, and we can only begin to imagine how much these would go for if a set came up for sale. Not that they'd be of much use to nearly anyone, but it would be a cool thing to have. There's surprisingly also another set that even closer resembles the standard GTI clocks, but has like a green arch over the top. As for that centre console you can see there, absolutely no clue what that's for. There's a few other differences, such as different icons in the cluster, a hazard light looking switch on the dash, but from what we can see this is on a later CE2 City Stromer because there's a hazard light on the steering column. So what that does I don't really know, but it's, it's there. 
but what's especially strange though is that for such a small production of cars there seems to be so many differences. For example, head over to YouTuber's channel Flying Tools and you'll see his, which is from a later run of them, completely different with different interior, different stuff all together. It's, it, it makes no sense. It's one of those things where it's gonna take a crazy long time to fully document everything that Volkswagen did with these cars, short of getting somebody who actually worked on them. As they did a run in 1984 and then a run later on, you'll already have the differences of CE1 stuff versus CE2 stuff, never mind fucking electric stuff versus later electric stuff. It just, it just gets crazier. In order to preserve battery power, the cars were fitted with a Wabasto type heater. The type you'd see in camper vans or overnight stays in the cold. Which was powered by diesel or kerosene, or whatever you had to hand basically like any other Wabasto heater. Nowadays of course, we can afford the battery power and the heating systems are fully electric. In production for only one year, sort of, only 102 city strummers were made. Two of which were right hand drive, which is mad. According to an article by a current owner on greencarreports.com, the two cars were commissioned, the two right hand drive ones that is, the two cars were commissioned for a company called Southern Electric and stayed with the company until they were sold off in the mid 90s. And Volkswagen UK actually bought back one of the right hand drive examples and are restoring it to its former glory. A wholesome end and a new beginning. Hello there. It's me, and it's that part of the video where I ask you to go and buy some fucking t-shirts so we can get some more shit cars to work on. Uh, this bit is admittedly rushed compared to usual because I am still working on that fucking golf back there. Trying to sort a whole load of shit out with that. Anyway, um, yes, uh, we have our own web store, 427motorsports.co.uk, where you can get yourself your own Volkswagen and Mercedes and other random obscure car shit t-shirts and trousers and other shit like that. Um, each video we do has its own theme. This episode about a car from 1984 and has electricity and lightning involved with it. It's themed after the 1984 album Ride the Lightning by Metallica. So if you want to get yourself a really obscure Volkswagen on a weird ass parody t-shirt of a Metallica t-shirt, hit the link <laughs> and uh, get yourself one. So uh, anyway, back to the episode because I gotta get fixing that fucking golf behind me. Thanks very much. After the Mark II Golf City Stromer, Volkswagen didn't give up on the idea. They later introduced a Mark II Jetta City Stromer, a Mark III Golf City Stromer, and of course, as we all know, a massive electric car push today. In fact, like it or not, it seems to be that electric cars are the push for the future, and most manufacturers are trying to do away with internal combustion engines altogether. Electric Mark II Golfs aren't just a thing of the past now either. As retrofitting modern electric motors into older cars is becoming a thing, you can even get electric companies to fit an electric setup, likely from a Tesla or a Nissan Leaf or something like that, into your Mark II, without having to take up the entire boot with batteries. It's fascinating to see that, unfortunately in the words of Call of Duty, the more things change, the more they stay the same. But finally, the space age dream of whizzing around in electric cars is actually becoming a reality. And the Gulf City Stromer is an important relic to show just how far we've come in electric technology. As always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I know electric cars are really a hard subject to cover because it's very Marmite. People love it or they hate it. But you know what? It is what it is. The City Stromer is a thing. It happened. So too bad. But I hope you enjoyed this little tidbit into Volkswagen Golf history. I've been Tomo, this has been 427 Motorsports. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Check out our web store and good luck.